How many of you guys remember the days that this channel only reviewed Audis? Yep, we have grown since then. Anyways, I'd love to give a big shout out to Audi London for giving us this white Q5 to review for your eyeballs. This is the 2023 Audi Q5. So some of the stuff I'll tell you is from a 2023 and a 2024, but the reality is it has been unchanged. It is unchanged. Here's the deal. If you want to buy an Audi Q5, you can choose this, the full size SUV, or you can choose a Sportback, two body styles. First body style is sold with four different engine choices. The first one is a 40. It makes 201 horsepower. The second one is called a 45, which is basically sold on most models. That one makes 261 horsepower. Then you have the plug-in hybrid, the 55, and that makes way more power, almost 100 horsepower more. And then you get their top dog, the performance version, the SQ5. Now, how about trim levels? Well, in Canada, it's sold as this, a comfort, a progressive, and a technic. In the US, it's sold as a premium, premium plus, and a prestige. Now it gets a little bit complicated. If you want to buy a hybrid Sportback, you can't get it. If you wanna buy the smaller engine Sportback, you can't get it, but you can get it in the normal 261 horsepower motor, and you can get it in a Sportback. Everything else, you have to buy this regular style SUV Q5. Hopefully that all makes sense to you. Now let's get into the video. the Audi Q5. Now it's looked kind of the same since 2018. This is very car-like, doesn't look SUV whatsoever. And that's the purpose of buying something like a Q5. You sit higher in it. These headlights are cool. They have this fancy illumination when you walk up to it. It's welcoming you to your Q5. You do have little details in the headlights. You have one, two, three, four DRLs that sort of give you this little arrow or check design. Moving down from there, you have two projectors, one for the high beam, one for the low beam. And when you move your eyes slightly underneath, you will see you have headlight washers right there. Moving down from there, I like that they don't have fog lights. They have radars on either side. And it's cool because this design element just sort of flows as opposed to having one big radar right there or in the center like most vehicles. Now moving your eyes in the center, you have this nice big honeycomb grill with the Audi logo in the center, obviously, and a front camera. And you also have Parktronics on the lower section of the bumper. And the other piece, it's got the Quattro badge. Wow. To the side of the Audi Q5. Now they're replacing their famous white. It's called Ibis white. It's been around forever. It's being called Arcona white now. Yep, for 2024, goodbye Ibis white. The other thing to note is that you can get black with black optics package, which means it's all black everything. And that gives you red brake calipers. Now wheels, they range from 19s all the way to 21s, depending on the Q5 you buy. On the side of the Q5, it's very similar to every Q5 around since 2018. These ones are 20 inch wheels and they say Audi Sport right on them. Now moving down into the length of the Q5, that's 15.4 feet. You have the S-Line badge. That's standard on all Technic models here in Canada. Then you have color matched mirror caps, handles, and then you have this aluminum roof rail. That's pretty much the same again, because it's not a black optics package, you get this satin sort of aluminum finish right here. Of course, you have tinted windows in the back. That's pretty straightforward when you buy any SUV and everything else pretty much the same, including this lower trim in plastic that appears to match the top. Moving down from there, you have the gas cap that of course only takes premium. You can't put regular gas in this thing. It is all premium. Now for the first time ever, the Audi Q5 is available with remote start in 2024 model year. That's crazy. I never thought this day would come that Audi would give you remote start. For all my history lovers, you guys can dig into that or comment below and let me know why you think Audi 
never had remote start up to this point. Starting from the top here, you have this extended upper spoiler because it is an S line. Moving down from there, you have these canards to reduce wind drag when you're flying through the streets of Toronto because there's a million Q5s there. You have this rear wiper and of course a tinted rear glass. Down from there, you have the Audi logo. You have these dynamic taillights, which do the same sort of illumination or welcoming you to your Q5, just like the front lights. You have this strip all the way from end to end to widen the car out and to give it a little bit more character because there's not much when you look at a regular Q5 in white. Then you have a rear camera hiding underneath there. That's where you also pop this tailgate and I'll show you in a minute. The Quattro badge, the Q5 on that side. There's nothing here to tell you that it is the engine that it is. Then you have these lights down here that has your reverse lights in it, your Parktronics, and then of course your fakie exhaust, but that's been around for a while. Now let's move this tailgate up to show you how it works. There is height positions. You can set this tailgate. It is at the highest position now. If I want to lower it, I can simply hit this button and then stop it and then hold this down and you will hear a sound. There we go. Now it's set to that height. Every time you open and close the tailgate, it'll come to that height. There's also a button next to it. When you hit that button, you can walk away from the vehicle and everything in the vehicle will lock. Now, how much room do you have in the back of the Q5? As far as depth goes, you have 37 inches. And as far as width goes, we've got 47 inches. And for those that care about height, let's use this measuring tape and figure it out. You have just about 31 in terms of height. Now, what about folding these seats down? Well, yes, Audi gives you handles. You pull these guys and the 6040 is in action. Now you do have that center that can fold down, so it's not technically 6040, but when you pull these handles down, that's how it works. What about storage underneath? Well, there is none. You do get though an actual tire. It's not a full tire, it's more of a blow up tire, but it's hiding underneath here. Voila, this is temporary use only. Now, if you're curious to know how much the Audi Q5 tows, well, it has a maximum towing capacity of 4,500 pounds. Yep, you can tow two jet skis right behind your Audi Q5. Front seat of the Audi Q5. Oh, this feels like home, man. Oh, Audis, I've had you for a long time. All right, you have two memory seats. Then you have a nice big pocket for two big water bottles. You have your trunk release in the door panel itself, along with your Bang & Olsen sound system. You do have a black headliner. It's standard when you get an S-Line or a Technic. It does have a 12.3 inch driver's display and a 10.1 inch display for everybody else in the vehicle. I like this new design they have. Check it out. You have the tack on the left, like the RS model, and then you have the speedometer all the way up to 300 kilometers, but it tops out at 209 here in Canada. Now you have this S-Line steering wheel that I've always found to be a little bit skinnier. I wish it was a little bit thicker. It is heated. And of course you have the perforations in it to make you feel like you're sporty driving. And the steering wheel is tilt and telescopic. It is not manual. It is powered up and down and of course towards you. Now moving down from the 10.1 inch screen that's always been criticized as just an iPad on the dash. You have two vents, your hazard lights, and there's a small little black trim that goes around it. Then of course you have your brushed aluminum that has ambient lighting right above it that flows all through the dash. Then of course your Quattro badge because this is an Audi and Quattro is the most important thing when it comes to Audis. Actually, the reality is when you buy an Audi, you kind of get everything that's just done well. You don't have one thing that kills it over the rest. Everything in an Audi is just done very well. Then moving down from there, you have your pretty straightforward HVAC that's been around since 2017 in the Audi A4. Very easy to use. You have your knobs on both sides. It does have three zone climate control. You do have three increments of heated seats. And then you have these little haptic buttons where you slide your finger on top of it and then you have different options. And then to actually change it, you have to click it up or click it down. Then you have your drive select, which is essentially your different drive modes. When I hit it, it shows me all my different drive modes on the screen as well as the dash. You have off-road comfort, auto, dynamic, and individual where you can choose different settings. Then you have your stop and start button. You can hit your stability program, a bunch of blank buttons. Then you have your parking, which essentially activates your cameras and then hill descent and to shut the screen completely off. Then you have this little tray that I've found to be the most oddest place to put it. There's really nothing you can use it for. Maybe some coins in there, but they're eventually gonna fly out anyways. And then you have your start and stop button, your USB, and then your 12 volt. Now you have this piano black trim that's outlined by more brushed aluminum. Now, two things I would change on this dash. Having brushed aluminum is a bit of a problem because you drop anything on it, it'll actually 
in it. You have little tiny dents, especially when you look at an older one. And then you have all this piano black that is just full of fingerprints and small micro scratches. I would really change this up and choose a different trim if you can. Then you have this pocket here that makes sense to have because you can throw keys in it, you can throw coins in it, whatever you'd like. You have a little bit of a pad underneath so stuff doesn't move around. And then you have your typical Audi shifter that's park as a button, reverse forward, neutral, drive sport. And then you can click it over to the right where you have your paddle shifters where you can use the steering wheel or you can use your shifter. And then you have your electromechanical parking brake and then a little bit of storage here to put again more coins and such. Now the cool part about Audi is that if you want to turn the volume up as a passenger, it's right here. It's not on the dash like a lot of other vehicles. I really, really appreciate that Audi. And this is a piece I've never seen before. This is where the wireless charger is. That is amazing. I just drop my phone there and it charges up. I love that Audi. And if you do have cups, you just simply slide this back and you put your cups in here. And speaking of cups, you can choose whether you want to have it heated or cooled. And of course you slide this forward again and you do have a bit of space here along with one more USB-C though, not a USB. Now the one thing manufacturers should copy Audi is a sliding armrest. Now check this out. You can lift it up and down so you can set the height and then you can slide it forward. Just this little feature here must be patented by Audi because so many other manufacturers don't have this. It's always fixed and that's really annoying to me. I'm always have to put my elbow a little bit further back. I'm not the tallest guy in the world. I'm 5'9". Guys that are six foot or so don't have to do it, but anybody my size, they just won't have a spot for their elbows. But in the Audi Q5, you do. The one thing I will say though is on the door panel, the way it's shaped, I don't get a lot of elbow support on the door panel. It's always been like that with Audis. For somebody with my build, it's just too far here or too far here. I can't have both. My back sags. So to sit up straight, I just can't have it. My elbows just don't go here. Anyways, that's my little story. But there is somewhere for my wrist right here on the shifter. It's nice and wide. And yeah, there we go. And then of course you have your normal panoramic sunroof. That's pretty typical in all Audis. And then of course I do have this. Now take a look at how Audis done the sill. Usually they're illuminated on the face. However, this is done on the edge. Totally new, it is illuminated. This is a really cool design for the Q5. It makes it less boring for sure. Now before we jump in the back seat, I want to talk about these seats in specific. These are standard when you get the Technic. These are S-Line seats. It doesn't say S-Line anywhere on it. However, they are very bolstered. They do have leg extensions and they have the ability to do this. Check this out. I can move this, this in and I can move it out for a bit more neck and head support. I love these seats. These are great seats and I'm glad they did not change them. However, they are not ventilated. Back seat of the Audi Q5. All right, we've got bolstered back seats that have leg extensions built into them. Now I do have a decent amount of storage in this door panel along with the Bang & Olufsen's right in here for good sound. I do have pockets right behind both seats and this panoramic sunroof goes past my head which is a thumbs up. Great visibility back here, no complaints whatsoever. I do have two USBs there for charge only and that is said there because People expect that when you plug your phone in, you'll have your music transfer through, but that's not the case in the back seat. I do have three increments of heated seats per side, and I do have climate control that I can adjust. When I put this down, I do have dual clutch holders, and I do have a pass-through, but it's only done when I put this seat down like this. Because remember, when I pop the trunk and I pull those handles, it'll do a 60-40 deal. Now, the other thing about these seats is that I can recline them. I can, this is the maximum recline I can do, and I can slide them forwards and backwards. So if I do want to have more room in the trunk, I can simply do this. I can sit like this, and this is the maximum room you'll get in the trunk. But of course, you'll lose room in the second row where I'm sitting. And that is it. Lots of room back here. I do feel good. Never had any complaints about the backseat of a Q5, and today in 2020, oh, it's no different. City driving in the Q5. All right, so one of the biggest pushes for me on buying something premium was always having premium in bad weather. Everybody's like, no, I gotta buy a good car for good weather. No, I was like, good car for bad weather. And that's why the Audi have always worked for me because it's all around, it's good. It gives you, everything is easy to use, very straightforward buttons, very simple, but very good quality. Like the tightness, the fit and finish has always been really good in the Audis. But it's been the other side of it, it's been pretty plain. And people are like, it's kind of boring. And it is, it's just simple. 
And that's why it hasn't changed because it sells. And that's the play for Audi. has always been the play for Audi. But how does it drive? Now, I will tell you that by putting in different drive modes, you're not getting any exhaust sounds differences. No, it's simply just where the RPM stops getting super aggressive. Yeah, and that's when I stick it in dynamic and I can show you, but I'm in city streets. So it's only point of putting in dynamic is if I'm trying to pass cars, little short bursts, that's when you put in dynamic. Otherwise, you just leave it in comfort and roll around. I sit nice and high, lots of great visibility, no real blind spots. And if I did have a blind spot, you have your blind spot indicator that's nice and big, that flashes this big LED in your face if you try to turn into the car next to you. And how about noise in this four banger? Under normal load, you can't really hear it. When you get into it, yes, you can definitely hear it. It is a pretty loud four banger. They've tried to make it somewhat quiet, but you do have wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto to turn your tunes up to sort of negate some of that noise. Now in driving almost 300 vehicles over the last three years, I can tell you the one thing the Audi Q5 pops out to me is the brakes. The brakes actually work really well. They're not super grabby, but they're, they're firm when I hit them. And some other brands, I have to hit a little bit more for them to work, but I find that the Q5 does a good job in braking. Braking is important to me. The outside is a little bit too plain for me, especially in white. You have to have it in black. You have to have the competition package. You have to spice the Q5 up for it to look good on the outside. I do like the Sportback design, and we're going to review that hopefully soon. But that's it for my review of the 2023 Audi Q5 with a little bit of salt when it comes to 2024. So hopefully that helps you in your guidance on purchasing an Audi Q5. And thanks again, big shout out to Audi London for giving us this Q5 for this short review. Thanks for watching.